Hello and welcome to this edition of the Angels and Destiny show. Why is this show called this, you may ask? So I'll tell you. The accepted meaning of angel is messenger and the accepted meaning of destiny is to make firm establish. So my guest and I bring you messages to establish what you need to know in the present. And also, I like working with angels and the calmness they bring. Now, in a moment, I will introduce you to my, to my guest, the wonderful Sophia Montagna. But before that, I'd like to say thank you so much for watching the show live at a later date, as it means a lot to me to connect with like-minded women. Now, if you've never met me before, then my name is Ray, and I love to help women to crossroads in their life, heal their past, create their future, and transform their present, so they can take charge of their destiny in the here and now. I'm the founder of Radiant Angel Energy, and I use future life progression, past life regression, angelic Reiki, guided meditation, angel oracle cards, and hypnosis to help women who feel lost get clear on their reason for being here. I've also created several transformational packages, including finding your authentic self um, and journey through lifetimes. Now, each episode of the show covers various themes of your journey, a mini guided meditation or angel oracle card reading with the wisdom of my wonderful guests, like today's guest, Sophia Montagna, about building up confidence after a breakup. Now, Sophia is a transformed relationship and breakup recovery coach. She is an internationally certified coach and a member of the Association of Professional Coaching, as well as an NLP practitioner with certifications in hypnosis and timeline coaching and a qualified mental health first aider. Now, Sophia specializes in bringing mindfulness and empowerment to her clients who have experienced a breakup, which has left them with an intense feeling of pain, upset, loss and loneliness. Sophia helps them to heal, to find their confidence and build upon self-love for positive growth. She also specializes in providing her clients with clarity, conflict, resolution skills and other tools and techniques to support them when experiencing blocks or challenges within their relationship and or marriage. Sophia speaks through experience and will share some of that experience and the various techniques and tools she's used to find, boost and nurture confidence following a breakup and how to sustain a healthy balance moving forward. Now with testimonials such as Sophia is a great listener, calm and very professional. She helped me identify myself and offered the help I needed. I recommend her as an outstanding professional coach and I've had the pleasure of working with Sophia. Her approach was kind, calm and professional. She's always asked the right questions to get my mind thinking of the real issue and I would highly recommend Sophia as a coach. So without further delay, hello, Sophia, and welcome to the Angels and Destiny show. How are you today? Hello, Ray. I am great. Thank you so much for having me on today. An absolute pleasure. And how are you today? Yep, I'm I'm very well. So again, thank you for coming along. And thank before you. we get into this fascinating conversation, I want to remind you that not only can you share this video, but you can also ask questions, leave comments and thoughts as both Sophia and I want you to be part of this conversation. So please don't be shy. So Sophia, why don't you tell us more about your journey and about how women can build up confidence after a breakup? Mm, definitely. So uh, I actually started my journey as a coach after coming out of a marriage. Um, I was in a relationship for 13 years um, from the age of 18. And uh, those were kind of my core years, really. Um, and I was obviously with this this one person. And then all of a sudden, uh, you know, uh, I'm coming out of this relationship. I'm having to get a divorce. Uh, and I really just had to start again. So I actually went through my own healing journey for several years before engaging in any other kind of relationships, really, because I think it's really important that we take that time out. Uh, and a lot of the, the clients that I speak to, uh, it, it is all about that healing journey initially and being happy with yourself before then heading out there again um, and seeking you know, new love, etc. So. I took the time to heal. I actually found me again and who I was and who I wanted to be as well and what I wanted to achieve. And I, I, I'll i go through some of the various things that I did, but initially what I did just before the breakup, I want, I was quite low, uh, really low in myself and my own confidence. I didn't feel good enough. I didn't like my appearance and I was the constant chitter chatter in my head was always telling me that I, I kept replaying those thoughts in my head about myself 
So just before the breakup, I actually uh, took up belly dancing and I've never done belly dancing before. I've always had a dancing background and I've danced from um, a young age, but I thought belly dancing was very different. Mm. And the outfits and the colours and the sparkle, I thought, oh, I would love to do a bit of that. That's really going to help and boost my confidence. So I started uh, belly dancing classes. I actually had a show, my first show in front of an audience, uh, the week before I was coming out of this relationship. Wow. So (laughs) I was very much, I knew it was coming. Uh, I, I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know what my life was going to be like after 13 years of being in a relationship with someone uh, but I had to start with me and I had to do something that I felt would help me take my mind away from it but also to maybe boost my confidence up a little bit uh, so I, I did this show and it was the most amazing evening um, you know all dressed up and uh, yeah it was fantastic but that was just the start of my journey I had a long way to go so with my clients and obviously with my own story as well I went through for me I would call it was like hell uh it was awful um and when you had the everything around it so home what's going to happen going through a divorce I actually started a new job at the same time Uh, so I had everything going on at the same time so one of the first things I did really was to sit back and actually acknowledge how I was feeling and going through those emotions and women generally feel a breakup a lot worse than what males do initially in that immediate um period of time following the breakup Uh, so we tend to think a lot more as women as well and there's been studies around this where we are active thinkers and we'll think about the past we'll think about all what's going to happen in the future we'll think about the here and now and how we're currently feeling um and we experience more pain generally as well. But we also actually get over breakups quicker than what men do too. So I think that initial period for us is is really key, which is why I always um, support my clients um, in actually taking a step back and actually acknowledging how you're feeling. If you want to cry, you cry. If you are having a bad day, let it be. Just just go with it. Go with the flow of whether you're up there or you're down or, you you know, I, I call it the roller coaster um because one minute you are the next minute you're not and I definitely was like that as well I had my good days I had my bad days but you know what it was okay so confidence then came about in how can I support myself right now through going through this breakup and so I started my own journal and I started to write things down that I really loved about myself but this had to come from me it couldn't come from anyone else because anyone can tell you you're beautiful you're lovely you're so good at this but unless you believe it it, it's not going to sink in so i started a journal and i started to write down things that i felt was good about myself Um, whether it was a skill i had whether it was uh, you know i'm a i make a, a mean tiramisu so and i know that everyone loves it So I put that down. It was something silly, but I make a mean to of a soup. I'm putting that down there. Yeah. (laughs) So I started this journal, wrote lots of things that was good about myself, but I had to believe it. And and so it had to come from the heart as to, yes, this is who I am. And I started to build upon that as the weeks, as the months went on. Um, And then I started to think about my mindset. And it all starts with mindset and the way we think and whether we're positive about things, negative about things. So my self-doubt in my image, in me, had to change. And only I could do that. So, again, the belly dancing helped. I found confidence in in actually being me. And if I had to accept myself. So I would get in the get up in the morning look in the mirror and just say something positive about myself I love my hair today I like um the lipstick color I'm wearing today really suits me um I'm liking the color that you know top I'm I'm wearing and actually this is um and I've worn this on purpose because I've been told that mustard yellow is the right color for me one of the right colors for me uh so I started to look at my style my clothes uh I had a hairstyle for, for so many years 
and I literally just used to put my hair up with a clip and every day I, I looked like that. And one of my very good best friends, he used to say to me, have you ever considered changing your hairstyle because you look like something out of the 70s? <laughs> and that hurt me at that moment. But you know what? It actually gave me the the, the kick up the, the bottom to go, right, okay, I need to change at this. I need to change myself. So I started experimenting with hair, with colors, with clothes. I then built upon that journal. I was writing good things about myself. I was nurturing my mindset in how I, I perceive myself, that I was me, I should be happy with the way I am. I don't have to look at another woman and think, oh, well, but she's got that and I don't have that, or that one has that and I don't have that. I was nurturing everything about myself. So um, I then took up activities that made me happy so this is where the self-love came in I, I'm, I love going to spas and treating myself so I started to nurture myself a lot more too and actually going to do all these things that I love doing I love crafts I started um, making my own cards handmade cards and selling them um, the, the over the years the belly dancing then significantly changed things for me I was on stage with um, outfits that were a little more revealing that than I ever thought I could even wear ever uh, but my confidence was starting to come back so I just implemented little things from a journal and writing down the good things about me and remembering them and going over it looking in the mirror what do I like about myself today um, the changing colors changing hairstyles just really experimenting but doing it for me and not for anyone else and I guess the key message here for women that are experiencing a breakup, it's it's be you, be yourself, go through those emotions of how you are feeling, but also take that time out rather than rushing into another relationship or feeling. Sometimes we feel the need to want to be loved by someone and that brings us happiness. And the reality is that we make ourselves happy. Yeah, uh, We make ourselves happy through the things that we do for us, the things we enjoy doing. Uh, I talk about the love, the five love languages a lot as well. And finding out what your love language is. Is it, you know, words of affirmation? Do you want to tell yourself great things? Um, is it going to be gifts? Do you like going out and buying yourself something? And um, I actively do a lot of this on my social media as well. And I'll go and buy myself flowers and they make me happy. Yeah. And it, they don't have to be expensive but I'm doing something for me. Uh, so that journey is all about taking the time out, feeling what you're feeling, but also starting to nurture yourself in a healthy, balanced way uh, from these little kind of things that you can do from, you know, um, affirmations that you might want to say to yourself, the, the positive thinking. Uh, but having the friends and friends friends and family around you too because that's really important and as much as we've got to do the inner work after a breakup having that input from friends and family obviously is great uh, and that support and, and nurturing with that too uh, but a lot of that hard work needs to come from within us uh, and it's about embracing that really um, and finding ways in which you can feel better about yourself um, and once you've kind of mastered that, which um, I did, and it took some time after 13 years, I think yeah. I took a couple of years out um, to just do me um, and build up that confidence again. So those are just some of the things I did um, in that initial kind of breakup period to kind of boost my confidence. Yeah. And, and of course, it's not just sort of like, you know, someone breaking up from you. It's you breaking up from someone as, as well. You know, you've got to that point where... I can't go stay on in this relationship um, mm. anymore. And, you, you know, even if you init initiate that, you still go through all those emotions. Indeed, yeah. And everyone's situation is going to be very different. Uh, I think for those that, and, uh, you know, maybe we have at some point in our life, but, you know, people, partners that cheat, for instance, um, partners that are having affairs, those are, I think, uh, the ones that hit home the worst because you are then comparing yourself to this person that your partner has has gone off with potentially or has had a fling with or hasn't had an affair with and you then start to question yourself and you start to think well what is wrong with me yeah. why would why would that person do that to me what what's that person got that I don't have 
And in the majority of cases, when partners do this, it's not about you. It's actually about themselves. Mm. Uh, and a lot of the work that I've done has been around our past, what has happened to us in our past when we were younger our upbringing the family we've had around us and sometimes we can make we make decisions based on insecurity from our past from sometimes when you've not had your parents around for instance or been nurtured or loved in a certain way when you feel that with a stranger or someone you've met and maybe you don't have that with your partner yeah. you naturally will feel that attachment to someone external uh, so we all make different decisions in life and a lot of the time it's not about you as a person it's actually about the person that's taken undertaken that action or yeah. that behavior um so again for for us women it's as hard as it might be to remember that it's going to be extremely difficult to actually i think well why why me what's wrong with me yeah, you know, and that's the hardest bit with betrayals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can, I can, I can imagine. Um, you know, and you know, and and the other person that they have an affair with doesn't need to the most beautiful person as well. They, they, they could be as as plain as anything, or mm. more weight than you, and you and you kind of like think, why? Mm. So, you, you, you know, what, what, what have they got that that I yeah. haven't that I haven't mm. got? And, and you do have to work on yourself a lot to mm -hmm. to get over that. And, and yeah, and it definitely, it's not you. Mm -hmm. It is, yeah. And I think if you don't love yourself fully, you can't expect anyone else to love you because it, it has to come from within. So I think there's so much power in actually getting up in the morning and walking out the door and just feeling a sense of confidence in who you are as a as a woman and as a person and I gained that over the, the years that I was healing I was as I said I, I look back at photos now of myself back then to how I am now and I'm a completely different person I was very much uh you know in this relationship and it was all about that person for me and I did everything for him and that's I felt very content and everything else but actually when I looked back I put so much time and effort into him that I didn't actually invest that time in myself and I needed to find me again and by finding me I built up confidence in so many different areas of myself so for the women out there it's be confident in who you are uh, as a person, as an you know, um, as a woman, and actually nurture all those great things that you have about you, the skills you have, the things that you're good at, um, and not just the things that maybe you're not so good at. But yeah, <laughs> embrace a lot of who and what you are, um, and by avoiding the comparisons to other people, the you know, there's always that whole hype around social media and looking at other women and uh, and I think a lot has changed now uh, particularly with you know models that are out there people that yeah. are on you know magazines and whatnot but trying not to compare yourself to other people because you're unique and special in your own ways so it's it's embracing that what's unique and special about you reminding yourself of that through your little daily reminders. Um, I used to put things on my fridge. So when I was about to go and make a cup of tea in the morning, I had this magnet that I wrote on there and it had something like, you're amazing. I, I actually have a mood board in front of me and um, one, of, one of the photos on there is, you are amazing, remember that. It's little things like that. Um, I've got another yeah. one that says, hey you, just wanted to say you're awesome, have an amazing day. And it's little things that I look at, I'm like, that's so true. Yeah. <laughs> and I walk out and I'm like, right, okay, I'm starting my day. Um, so yeah, it, it's all about those little things, but it takes time. And I think the most important thing here is nurturing that time with yourself before jumping into another relationship. Because if we've got insecurities, uh, we are going to bring them out into our next relationship. We are going to potentially crave um, love and attention from someone because we feel we need that and maybe we're not getting it from anyone else um, and naturally as well if you've been in a relationship for a very long time and then all of a sudden you're single it is for me I felt 
uh, how do how, what do I do? How does yeah. this work? Um, oh, uh, I can't even imagine being in another, another relationship right now. Like, who, who, and what is he going to be like? So there's loads of things that I had going on in my mind as to what the future is going to be, and I think that's the uncertainty. Is is we always think what's going to happen i i can't see beyond tomorrow or beyond next week yeah. um, and some of the clients i've i've worked with that initial breakup period is the toughest the absolute yeah. toughest um and a lot of uh, the ladies i've spoken to as well are coming out of betrayals where you are always questioning yourself as to what you've done wrong what what could have you what could you have done differently um and it's a reminder that we don't need to necessarily do things differently or to be a different person or to look a certain way um it's down to that individual as to why they've done it but actually embrace you as a woman and who you are and nurture that yeah ab absolutely and as you said it's it's not kind of like rushing to another relationship which unfortunately as as women we 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 tend to do that because that's what we've been programmed since we were children mm -hmm. you know you're a female you need to be in a relationship yeah. so, so we have that breakup and rather than actually going actually let me take time enjoy my life go go and have some fun um etc i need to get into another relationship because that's what i've always been told that i need to that i need to be i can't mm -hmm. be by myself i have to be a pair yeah it's also the pressure the pressure from people around you saying oh have you met someone yet have mm. you met someone yet and you know i had that for so long have you met someone yet um and it's the pressure and then you've got friends that maybe are also dating and and you know they then find someone and you're like oh you know they found someone you know when when am i going to find the right person and you know as women we naturally start to feel this pressure to have to be in a relationship because that again like you say we're, we're programmed to to be in a relationship to you know in some cases get married have children and some women that are slightly older that maybe haven't got that yet there's a huge pressure to find someone to have a baby to you know our biological clocks are always ticking um so we're, we're constantly thinking well oh, i need to find someone and in some cases we settle for people that are not right for us um uh, that actually change us as individuals as well because of maybe the way that they are uh, and that's why it's so important to find you find who you are what you want in life and when you're ready completely ready without forcing it without you know searching for it um per se i always feel that the right person will come along that will nurture and complement who you are are but not come in to change you or to um make you someone that you're not so uh I, I was i'm a kind of a believer of kind of the, the universe bringing in the right person at the right time and you know it's, it's for some people and it's not for others but you know I, I do think that um by not forcing those situations so much and um and feeling the need to have to be with someone um for them to be a certain way uh yeah it it's kind of just going with the flow really and enjoying yourself. I actually traveled a lot as well after my breakup and um, I did, there's always pros and cons of being single yeah. and then being in a relationship. But at the moment that I came out of mine after 13 years, I did lots of traveling and I went to so many places that I'd never traveled to before. And I didn't feel that I had to speak to, the, to my partner and say, oh, well, I'm going here, I was free. Yeah. Um, to do what I wanted and there is great pleasure in doing that as well um, but as part of that I, I obviously transformed myself and I a butterfly is a, is a big thing for me and in actual fact yeah. um, I actually got a tattoo um, of a butterfly which actually represents my transformational journey as a person um, and it's in everything that I do so I tend to have bottle flies in a lot of my content and um, kind of around the house as well so uh, yeah that for me is 
I've transformed. I'm now this new person. So um, it's exciting, really exciting. Yeah. That, that initial breakup period, to think that far ahead, it's it's not going to happen. So taking the time, heal, uh, and and feel all the different emotions that you're going through, and, and don't feel you've got to hide away or to ignore them. It's about embracing them and and feeling them and being okay one day and not being very good the next and yeah and better and but that confidence will come with time it's not going to happen overnight it's not going you're not going to say i'm going to be more confident tomorrow and it's just going to happen uh it will take time but start to bring in all these little things that you can do that are right for you um into your your life into your daily routine uh and and th slowly but surely with the positive mindset um with the you know, I'm good enough, I am happy in myself, uh, you will then start to realise that that confidence will start to come to come back. Um, yeah. But it's not to be forced. Yeah, 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 t totally. So how did you get into the coaching side of it? What made you decide to actually think, actually, I can help other women here do this? It was actually during lockdown last year. So uh, I was on furlough, as were many people. And I was finding myself helping friends and family they were asking me various different things so my experience actually is in human resources that's my background uh, for many years so I had lots of uh, questions around work stuff during furlough and relationships that were breaking down because so many couples were spending a lot more time with each yeah. other and I suddenly had a uh, kind of light bulb moment to think why am I not doing anything with this <laughs> <laughs> And I'm normally quite impulsive. And when I have an idea, I just run with it. <laughs> so the next day I was then looking up courses um, to be a coach and what I needed to do. And I then booked myself on and started to do all my training. Uh, and then I'm like, right, okay, I'm starting up my own business. Uh, and, and it just all went from there. So it was just speaking to so many different people during lockdown and the problems and, and issues that they were experiencing I found myself um, indirectly coaching them yeah and I had great feedback from them so I decided to take it from there and utilizing my own experience of my own breakup and transformation I thought it was relevant to obviously pick this niche uh, and, and being able to to support other people through it as well yeah, we, which is which is absolutely amazing because we all, you know, we all need support and help. I mean, when you went through it, did you know? Did you find that you had support or help, or or did you kind of like it was like well, there's not really a lot out there for me? I kind of like did a lot of this by myself. I did a lot for myself. Yes, uh, I, I think I realised I was a lot stronger than what I thought and more resilient. And um, a lot of the times we it does happen in that way but I had um very close friends that I spoke to as well as obviously my very close family immediate family uh I didn't really I never would have thought to speak to a coach or to speak to anyone externally about it um for me I was I guess I was embarrassed and I don't know why I was embarrassed I was going through this uh and particularly as again the pressure and the from lots of friends and family it was always like but you're the perfect couple but you're the perfect couple I can't believe it but you're the perfect couple so I felt very much overwhelmed by that and then to have to then tell them oh well yeah no it's not worked out um so I did a lot of healing uh with myself actually uh, I didn't really read much about it I didn't um I literally embraced every day as it came and I went with the flow of it and I acknowledged when I was feeling really low and down and then I acknowledged when I felt happier if I if I felt I needed that support I would arrange to go and meet with friends and sometimes I felt happy talking about it to kind of get it off my chest other times I was like oh I don't really want to talk I don't want to yeah. bring it up I just I'm I'm fine so I didn't really seek any external help at the time and if I knew of coaches um back then then I probably would have had confidence in actually speaking to a coach so that I can 
support myself and maybe heal a lot quicker possibly yeah. uh because i felt like it's taken a long time so i may have been able to heal a lot quicker knowing that there was obviously that external support out there yeah yeah because 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 it's kind of like only really been in recent years isn't it that it's kind of like there's there's a lot more coaches for a lot of, a lot of things out there yeah. um and you know trying trying to find it you know you, you know what what kind of coaches work in relation you know relationship coaches well they just talk about after your breakup and it's yeah yeah no there there aren't many breakup recovery coaches and I guess I didn't uh, I actually got asked a question once going so do you help people break up <laughs> I'm like no, no not really <laughs> I don't intently go and say right I'm gonna break the two of you up now uh so I kind of had to reword it in such a way that it was yeah post recovery of a breakup uh, and there aren't many out there and I guess a lot of people that are going through a breakup as I say wouldn't necessarily think oh, I could speak to a coach about this. Yeah. Um, so it's about raising that awareness, really, that there are people out there that can help you through this. And I think what's really important is uh, someone that's gone through it because they can fully resonate and actually appreciate the situation um, a lot better as well. So that was really important for me, being able to share some of my experience um, with my clients too. So, uh, and they can, again, resonate with me too. Yeah, it makes makes absolutely makes absolutely sense. Um, yeah. You know that you've gone through your own journey, and now yeah. you know you're right. You're able to help other people with your experiences, your knowledge mm -hmm. um, of, of of doing that. And, so, and we 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 quite often need to, um, that from somebody who's been through it themselves um, to actually go, okay, yeah, they they understand. They they get they get where I'm coming from. Yeah, they they know that little wibble that that I had the other day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. It's it's all about that. Uh, I've I've been coaching someone for about six months now um, that has gone for a breakup and and actually seeing uh, his transformation as well from the um, and another big thing that we tend to do after is the the dwelling on social media, the spying, the stalking um, on on that other individual as well, which then can affect our confidence because if we then see that they're with someone else whether in a relationship or not that's then going to knock us um as, knock us down and think oh well they've just moved on they're now with someone else that then affects our confidence so a lot of what i do within my breakup recovery program is finding ways in which you can limit that or remove it completely straight away uh, and also limit those interactions. And obviously it's a lot harder for those that have children uh, that have to obviously comply and, and be civil for, the, for the, the children. But it's finding ways in which you can limit that contact, limit the interaction, limit seeing what they're doing. Because if we dwell on that, if we always look, we are not helping ourselves and that healing process will take a lot longer. Um, and it also can impact on our confidence as well. Um, I, I think for me, my um, ex-husband actually went straight into another relationship um, within a couple of months. So, you know, at the time I'd, I was fine about it because it took a bit of time before that the official breakup. So I was already preparing myself. Uh, but when I did find that out, I actually wasn't, I wasn't affected so much by it because I wasn't looking anything up I wasn't actively trying to um, see what he was up to yeah. I'd healed myself to a certain extent that when I did see it it actually didn't really hurt me so much it didn't impact me in a way that maybe it would someone else yeah. so it's been mindful of your actions uh, that may ultimately then uh, affect your confidence as well by what you see yeah and and you and you mentioned there um your your clients so so obviously i mean men do go through that you know we we talk about women it's more women than, than men because men mm. don't tend to seek as much help do they when when it happens they kind of no. like no 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 i can handle this yeah they, they tend to keep a lot uh, men generally move on a lot quicker uh, but then realise later on down the line what they potentially have lost, uh, how that person made them feel. And in most cases, 
uh, men don't experience that connection too often after that breakup um, because they might be out and about with friends and meeting lots of different women but that that connection you have with someone uh, is can be quite rare for a lot of men as well so they tend to go and have fun for a bit uh, before acknowledging oh okay actually I do miss that person for whatever the, the reasons are uh, yeah. but in the process it, it can hurt you know a woman in that that's what they're doing uh because they think well, well clearly i wasn't good enough clearly you know i didn't make them happy uh, so yes men deal with it completely different they go through it too it's not to say they don't um they go through it in their own various different ways as well as to how they perceive a breakup and, and being on the other side of that as well so yes yeah yeah, it's 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 always, it's always fascinating. There's differences, but there's similarities between mm -hmm. um, between the sexes, which which I think Definitely. is is really um, a, a brilliant thing. So so mm -hmm. thank you so so thank you for that. That you know that's that's really good advice and everything. Um, okay. Now, as you know, I do um, guided meditations, ancient oracle cards, and each week I like to ask my guests. Um, whether they would like me to do a mini guided meditation or pull an um, oracle card for themselves and those watching. So, Sophia, what would you like me to do? I'd love an oracle card, please. Funny enough, I have them in my hand. Oh, there you are. <laughs> Amazing, that isn't it? It's like, oh. we have that one. It, it is. Although, to be quite truthful, even with guided meditations, I tend to bring a card out anyway. So, yeah. um, that's, that's kind of like what I do. Now, obviously, when I do the cards, um, I do the cards for what you need to know for your highest good at this moment in time. Um, so, even though I work with, the, um, I do past life regression, I work with the past. When we work with the past, it's to heal it so we're back fully in the present. And when I work with future life progression, although we go into the future, we bring back the knowledge that we can use in our present. So everything is always what we need to know um, in, in the present. So what does Sophia and everyone who's watching this need to know? And it's absolutely perfect with what we've been talking about as well. View from above, get the big picture. Mm -hmm. yeah. how, how perfect is that card for what we've actually been, it been, really been is. talking it about? It really is. Wow. Yeah, you know, and it's this confirmation about what you've done, how you help people. And for all those that are watching, it is kind of like saying, you know, look at the whole picture. Don't just look at the tiny little bits. Look at the whole thing. Imagine you're in a balloon. Or, um, mm -hmm. You know, look down on what the situation, the, the issue is. You know, take yourself out of it. Look down. See all the characters, where they are, what they're doing. Mm -hmm. um, and then you'll actually see that it's not you. Mm -hmm. it's yeah it's, exactly it's, it's a yeah brilliant card um thanks for picking that out and it does it just reiterates everything with regards to what we're talking about with regards to breakups and and confidence it is looking at that bigger picture as to it's not all about that breakup at that moment it's actually looking at how can I help myself? How can I um, understand myself better? How can I be a happier version of me? What can I do to nurture that? It's walking out and actually, instead of seeing yourself walking down a narrow corridor, it's actually looking beyond that and looking at all the different angles from down, down the bottom to high up into the ceiling. What is it that's in front of me? And, um, and yeah, it's yeah. I I do think that's a brilliant card to have come out um, for today. I I just thought I love the way, and it's kind of like every time I do this show and I pull a card, um, or the angels. I I say they're the ones that sort of like are um, being the cards. You know that Guide one sort me, of like yeah. pushed itself off. It always is pertinent for whatever we've been talking about and confirmation mm -hmm. about what my guest has been saying. Um, so yeah, I just I just I just I just love it. Um, so, Sophia, do you have any insights or thoughts to leave our viewers? I think it's the simple thing about it all with regards to confidence in a breakup is believe in yourself in whatever capacity that might be and actually love yourself fully. Uh, because if you can't love yourself, then you can't expect anyone else to. So uh, that's my kind of uh last bit of advice to kind of end um end today it's 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 all about that yeah 
Perfect, perfect. So I hope everyone that you've enjoyed this conversation and found it insightful because I know I definitely have. Um, so Sophia, if people want to connect with you, how do they do that? Yes, so uh, my uh, company is Montana Life Coaching. So that's M-O-N-T-A-N-A. -A. Uh, so I'm on Facebook, on Instagram. Uh, my website is just montanalifecoaching.com uh, and all my details are on there should anyone want to connect with me. Cool. And what I do, what I'll do is I'll put um, in the comments after the show um, all the actual links so people can just click on them to actually mm -hmm. to actually find you. Um, uh, so so we can so we can do that, which would make it easier for indeed <laughs> for, for, for everyone. And of course, for those who are watching, you know, if you have reached a crossroads in your life and you need some help finding the meaning of your life or getting clear on your path then I would love to be that guide for you. So please feel free to reach out and connect with me and we can arrange a free 20 to 30 minute video call so that we can find out more about each other and whether I can actually help you take charge of your destiny. And of course, please feel free to sign up to my weekly newsletter and receive a free future life progression recording where I take you into a future lifetime to get some guidance and clarity that you can use in your current time. Plus, there's a few other little gifts on there as well. So again, everyone, thank you so much for watching. And I'd like to invite you to share this video, as I'm sure there are more women who feel lost and want to get clear on their destiny, just like you. And of course, if you're watching this on YouTube, then please feel free to subscribe if, it, if you feel like it and hit the bell button to be notified when the show goes live or when I post new guided meditations, which will actually help you on your journey as well. So Sophia, thank you so much for being on the show. It's been an thank absolute pleasure. So thank you so much. Absolute pleasure being on here today. Thank you. And everyone, thank you for watching. Thank you for joining in with your comments, um, saying hello, etc. And I look forward to you all joining me same time, same place next week. Bye. Bye-bye.